I think going going to the NBA, what excites me is just being around professionals and being around the best players in the world. Going into a situation where it's either college or NBA, you're still playing against people that are older than you. And I think that's, um, that's what excites me, playing against those type of players. Shades of Michael Jordan back in high school. Little baby Michael right here. Over here, there's Dante Exum. And the foul. Dante Exum is the best player of his age in the country. And this year at 15, became the youngest player since Andrew Gaze in 1984 to be a member of a senior boomer squad. There's a young fellow by the name of Dante Exum uh, who's heading for, a real, heading for really, really big things. The kid out of Australia, Dante Exum, who lit up the, the under 19s and I, I saw him at the, at the Nike Hoop Summit. A long, athletic 6'5", to play the one and the two. Dante Exum is such an exciting player. He's a great talent. He's quite a dynamic player on the court. He will represent Australia well, um, just because of who he is and how he speaks and how he carries himself. I think it's someone um, that uh, Australians would be proud to say, yeah, he's one of us. At the World Championships, Dante really proves how passionate he is to represent the green and gold. He showed people his leadership qualities as a leader, and, and that's going to be very important for him as he moves forward in his basketball journey as a point guard. If you buy a PlayStation game 2K NBA, he's actually already in the game. Oh, really? So that, the PlayStation have penciled him in anyway. Dante so. Exum, 18, uh, currently at the AS. The position I see myself as is a point guard, but I'm also a combo guard that can switch between the, the both positions of the one and the two. Yeah, at first when he did come in, I, I, I was kind of thinking that he would be a combo guard more so than a point guard. But over the time that he's been here um, and being with him like on a day to day basis, he really has improved his ball handling, his decision making and his vision up the floor. His key strengths was his versatility offensively. Um, he carried the ball for us. We are able to post him up, we are able to run him off screens. Yeah, definitely speed is one of my strengths in the game. It, it's, it's, it helps you with the ability to get past plays and, and um, create that help defence so you can find that open guy or even create for yourself. He's got good, uh, good speed for his size, you know, and someone who can play the one spot at his size and advantage and then his ability to you know, push the ball and advance the ball and penetrate and get in the rim, uh, get to the rim. Well, it's, it's just hard to, to keep him in front of you if you've got to guard him. So, you know, he, his quickness in, in that way, it, it just commands a lot of respect from the opposition and uh, it forces teams to, to collapse. I'm the type of player that's uh, get to the ring, try and explode, um, get, uh, play above the ring, try and get other players involved as well. So that's the kind of player I am. Some of the things that he needed to work on when he first came in was definitely his three-point shooting. He was always good at getting to the basket, but definitely his three-point shooting was one of the areas that he needed to improve. The one thing I really wanted to improve uh, going into the under-19s tournament was my uh, ability to shoot. So uh, it was one thing from 17 that wasn't so great, and a lot of people said a lot of things about it. So I wanted to come into 19s uh, having the confidence to back myself and be able to um, shoot the ball at a, at a good percentage. With the mechanics of his jump shot, he gets off the ground well. Uh, at first he did have like a slow and low release on his jump shot. So it's been with the help of you know, performance analysis and being able to break down his jump shot where he's getting more legs into his shot so he's jumping higher off the ground and just he's being stronger with his release and his follow through on his jump shot and giving more arc into the shot has been one of the main focuses that we've been working on with him. Coming to the AAS would have been like the, the time where I realised that yeah, like, this is what I want to do. So I think that's around 15, that was when I kind of made the decision that I'm going to stop playing um, any other sport and just focus on basketball. The National Centre of Excellence is the uh, development program for our young emerging talent here in Australia. It's where we bring uh, young basketball players to develop them into uh, elite players. And you know, to have someone like Dante come through that program, uh, to come through it so successfully with the, the level of interest and excitement that surrounds him, you know, he's inspiring a whole generation of male basketball players in this country. Like with the NCAA, it's always about being a student athlete. And my, my parents have made that clear within, within me that I'm going to be a student before I'm an athlete because uh, basketball doesn't last forever. 
and um, you see that in many examples where people after basketball have lost all their money or something like that and they need to turn to in, uh, something and they don't have anything so it's always been important that education side of thing to have something that I can fall back on. The AS has been uh, like the best thing to happen to me in my, um, in my uh, basketball career. Um, it's just a place where you can be around some of the best, best athletes in Australia um, for like a long period of time and get that training get the um, massage, physio, so you're around a professional environment that enables you to grow and develop as a player, so I think that's the best thing for any player um, to come here and develop. Dante as a person, easy going, um, but I, I, on the side I call him the quiet assassin, is when it comes game time and the game's on the line and there's a, there's a situation where you know, there's a score and a time to it, he wants to win. Well, Dante does have great talent, but he's nurtured that talent through hard work, perseverance, dedication and focus. And I think that's one of the most remarkable things about him. He hasn't just rested on the fact that he is supremely talented. He has actually made a commitment to develop that talent at the centre of excellence. He also has a humility about him and I think that's going to serve him well uh, in the next uh, few years of his journey and throughout his life. Uh, we like to think that's a particularly Australian characteristic, uh, but he certainly will be a remarkable ambassador for Australian basketball. Quiet and humble, yet confident, which I think is a nice mix, you know, certainly you need the confidence and it's one of those things in, you know, in sport and I think generally in life if you don't believe in yourself, you, know, you ain't going to achieve. It's just the way that it is. If you think you're going to fail, you'll definitely fail. Um, and so you need that confidence in there and he's, he's got that. It is important to stay humble because you see so many cases of people that just get everything, get all the hype and stuff gets to their head. And so I just try and stay, stay grounded and just act like not, none of this is happening and um, just go with it, I guess. You know, you, you make comparisons all the time about who they, one thing is I think he just needs to be himself, um, but if you're comparing him with somebody else's, I know his like, idol is, is Derek Rose. I don't really look at other players and say, yeah, I play like him. That's just not kind of what I do, but um, I've always tried to kind of, uh, I've always idolised Derek Rose. He's just been one guy that's been able to get past his player and explode to the basket, so that's, um, one thing I've tried to idolise, uh, I've, I've idolised him and try and um, take what he does in his game and put it into mine. And I, and I do think that he has helped like mould his game a little bit on Derek Rose's so I think he would be a younger version of like a, a big point guard like a Derek Rose type that's now in the NBA. Being told you're going to be a franchise player doesn't mean anything. They Honestly they can say what they like and it's just an opinion. It doesn't mean it's going to come true. Uh, dealing with, I guess, that pressure, it, it, it doesn't really matter to me because I know I'm just going to do what I can to, to get to that because that's obviously one of my goals. So um, I don't think there's any pressure in it. Um, uh, I've had pressure my whole life. The thing that I'd bring to any team, to say, is just um, someone that's ready to learn. Like, I listen to, I, I love listening to how some of the veteran guys uh, got to where they are and how they improve their game. So I think that's just the one thing and like um, going into a team like that where you're, uh, you're one of the youngest guys, it's just uh, that ability to learn. And I, I found that through the boomers, the boomer stuff and being able to learn through people like Paddy Mills and Joe Ingles. So I, I think that that's one thing. And um, just obviously just to be a hard worker, just to be in the gym and take on anything that anyone's saying and try and improve.